to another procedure, gel filtration chromatography, in which we separate the proteins based on size. And so following that, we extract that sample, we place it into this well, and this is the band that we get. And so this band disappears, other bands disappear. And so what that means is we're slowly purifying the protein, we're removing those unwanted proteins as shown by the decrease in the band distribution number. So that is what should be shown by this, uh, uh, by this, uh, by this table. So let's calculate this box and this box as always. The specific activity is 85,000 divided by 100. The two zeros cancel out and we have 850 divided by one and that gives us 850. Now, what about this quantity? So to calculate this, we simply take this divided by that. So the specific activity of that mixture divided by the original mixture and we get 85. So because this divided by this gives us 85 and let's use purple for that. Okay, so what that means is this extracted mixture following these processes up to this point is 85 times as pure as this initial mixture. And finally, let's carry out the final one. So in the final step, in step E, we take our extracted mixture of proteins and we expose it to affinity chromatography. And in affinity chromatography, we separate our proteins based on their specific ability to bind to these special molecules. And this usually creates a very high specific activity value because as we know, enzymes only bind to specific substrate to specific molecules. So let's see if that's true by taking the extracted mixture and placing it into our last well. So what we produce is a band distribution that only contains a single band. And what that usually means is we have isolated that protein of interest because this band consists of a protein that has a specific type of mass, a specific type of size. Now, let's, oh, and by the way, let's calculate what the yield in this case was. To calculate the yield, we follow this equation. So this divided by this gives us uh, 85 divided by 200, which is 42.5 divided by 100 multiplied by 100. That gives us a percent of 42.5. Okay, so let's go back to this step. So this basically means that we have successfully isolated that protein. We basically have this protein that consists of a single type of mass. Now let's see that the specific activity increases and this increases and let's make sure that the yield didn't decrease by too much. So if we have at least 30% here, that is a good procedure. So let's take a look at E. Uh, to calculate this, we take this divided by two and we get 35,000. So we see that in fact, this procedure has a high specific activity. And that makes sense because affinity chromatography separates these enzymes based on their ability to bind to specific enzymes. And so in our mixture, when we run our mixture proteins along that column of that affinity chromatography setup, only the protein that we want to study will bind to our beads inside that column. The other proteins will essentially go down because enzymes only bind to specific types of proteins. And so that's why this is such a high value because usually affinity chromatography separates by a very, very large margin. Now, what about the purification level? So this divided by this gives us 3,500. And what that means is, after all the procedures that we conducted, the final extracted mixture is 3,500 times as pure as that initial sample, and that is a high amount. Now, for this, for this set of procedures to actually be good, this yield has to be a high enough yield. So let's see what that yield is. So we take 70,000 divided by 200,000, that gives us 70 divided by 200, or 35 divided by 100. We multiply that ratio by 100, and we get 35%. And this is a high enough yield. So 
35% is enough to basically mean we can work with that extracted sample, the protein, to basically study that protein in different ways. So this, these are the five quantities that we have to calculate every time we carry out one of these procedures. And then we also normally expose our extracted portion to SDS page to basically help, uh, help us visualize if our technique is actually working. And if we combine these two methods, that gives us a very good idea if the purification technique is working. So normally as we go from A to E, the number of bands should decrease. And what that means is we're getting rid of those unwanted proteins and we're focusing in on that protein that we actually want to study and that is confirmed by these measurements because as we purify the sample the specific activity has to increase and so should our purification level and we also have to keep track of the yield we don't want our yield to drop to a very small amount for example, if following our procedure, this yield would have been, let's say, 5%, then this procedure would not have been efficient because at the end, even though we would have had a high purification value, that yield is not enough, 5% would not have been enough to basically create a mixture protein that is actually usable and workable in a laboratory setting. So whenever we're purifying proteins, we have to make sure that the purification level is high and that yield is high enough for us to actually work with that final purified mixture of protein.